us on tonight. We give honor to God, and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to our pastor, Pastor Craig I. Carter, the same man. Pastor. Amen. And to our first lady, Sister Angel Carter, God bless you, Sister Angel. And to you, the saints of God. Well, those of you who are watching via social media, I'm sure you have already let someone know that Williams Temple Church of God in Christ Bible study is on the air. If not, go ahead and tag and let someone know. Amen. Invite someone to Bible study like share and subscribe we're going to go ahead and get ready to amen hear another word from the lord from our pastor would you please stand we're going to ask god's blessing upon our time in the word on tonight gracious father god as we come before you on tonight oh god we first want to say thank you thank you for your loving kindness and thank you for your tender mercies Thank you, Father, for allowing us to see another day that was not promised to us. It was through no goodness of our own, O God, but through your loving kindness and tender mercies, you have spared our lives, whereof we are so glad. Now, God, as we come before you tonight, we ask that you would uh, bless our time in the word, prepare our hearts and minds that we might receive on tonight. Anoint our pastor, O God, to teach your word. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Sister Riggins is coming at this time to lead us in worship. Praise the Lord. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. So if you're not ashamed, come on, put those blessed hands together and let's bless the Lord together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus, I will bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus, because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I will bless his holy name. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Somebody help me. I don't, you know, sometimes my my eyes are, Elder Reagan, sometimes my eyes are not that good. That looks like Lauren, my daughter, in the back of the church. Amen, amen. It looks like her. <laughs> amen, amen. I, I love my child and I'm glad to see her. Amen, amen. Of course, that's not all of her. It's a couple of missing parts. Amen, but good to see you, darling. Good to see you. Amen. You may be seated, amen, in the presence of the Lord. I'm, I'm excited about tonight's Bible study. Thank you, Elder Hart. I don't know, you and Sister Riggins, y'all must be practicing on the side because y'all, y'all using all this, this little different stuff here, but it sounds good. Amen, amen. But uh, I thank God for being there. Thank God for First Lady, my daughter, and amen for all the saints. I'm, a, I'm excited about this series, Elder Hunter, on maturity. Because maturity puts all of us in check. Can I get an amen? There's one thing I always tell people that the room, the biggest room in the world, is the room for improvement. If you ever get to the place where you can't do no better than where you are, either you need to die or or, or do a good soul searching because it's something you can improve on. I was talking to someone else today, and they say, it's it's funny how we always encourage others to change. But the reason why we want others to change is because of our refusal to change. We won't, since I won't change, then I, I need for you to change so you can fit me. Amen. I want to get along with you, Elder Hunter, but you need to change. <laughs> but no, that's not, that's not how life works. Amen. Amen. Uh, life is give and take. We all have to make adjustments. And, and the adjustments I make this year, I may have to make totally different adjustments next year because circumstances and situations change. Can I get an amen? Amen. Cultures change. Uh, uh, people's mind change, you know, metabolism change, everything changes. Can I get an amen? So, so I want to deal with the mind a little bit more. Last week I dealt, dealt with the imagination, which imagination and mind kind of goes together. But tonight I want to ask the question, what's in your mind? Not what's on your mind, but what's in your mind. Look at your neighbor if you have one and say, what's in your mind? <laughs> you know, we, we you often ask folk, I wonder what they're thinking about. What we're really trying to figure out, what's in their head that they're pondering on? Let's go to Philippians 2, 5, and 7, which would be our foundational scripture. Look what it says. It says, let this mind. You notice it didn't say let these characteristics. It didn't say let this. It said let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but my point of emphasis is right here, but made himself of no reputation. I'm going to stop right there. Now, Genesis 6 and 5, we used this verse last week, and God saw, everybody say saw. You know, when you saw something, that means you can see something. You see what you saw, you saw what you see. I mean, it means it is visible. Amen. If I saw something, that means I visually saw it with my eyes. What did God see? It says God saw the wickedness of men. Well, it must have been some wickedness going on for God to see it. Where did this wickedness come from? It says it was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So what was in their mind, in their thoughts, they acted on it. It was continually, their imagination, Elder Riggins, was continually corrupt. 
and evil. So they acted on not what nobody told them. They didn't act on what they read. They acted upon what was in their mind. Are y'all with me? Now, look at Romans 12 and 2. We won't even read the first verse. Let's look at the second verse, Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. Okay, well, what, I, what do I need to do if I can't be conformed to this world? But be ye what? Transform how? By the renewing of your mind. Look here. If you're going to do better, be better, get anywhere in life, your mind has to be renewed. Lord have mercy. If you're going to be a healthy Christian, a healthy adult, you must renew your mind. What is the mind, Pastor? I was waiting for somebody to ask me that. The mind is a set of faculties with inside of your head. These faculties include sensation, imagination, your will, your choices, your memory, and your thoughts. All of those make up your mind. Lord have mercy. Don't y'all get quiet on me. Now, Roman tells us, Romans 12 and 2, to renew your mind. Why, why do you think God is telling the Christian to renew his mind? If God is telling you to renew your mind, it must be something wrong with the mind you had before you got saved. Because if it wasn't, he wouldn't tell you to renew it. He, he might tell you to make a few adjustments. He didn't say, adjust your mind. He says, renew. That means do your mind over again. Re means to repeat. The prefix re means to do again. Lord have mercy. Calm down, pastor. I'm good. Prior to your conversion, everybody know what conversion is. I didn't say convertible. I say your conversion. Prior to you getting saved, your mind was being filled over a period of time with all sorts of information. Before you got saved, even before you come out of your mother's womb, you were receiving things into your mind. And whatever you receive into your mind is the pool that you pull from. Don't get quiet on me, y'all. I think, I, I, I think y'all not listening to me. So, so if you don't renew your mind and replace what's in it, and I put on here, Deacon Meeks, not merge, but purge. So you don't, you don't take and what God is trying to tell you and merge it in with what you already think. You don't merge the newness of mind with the old mind. You bring in the new and you purge and you push out the old. Lord have mercy. Purge out the old and replace it with the word of God and a new way of thinking that reflects Christ. You ever notice people try to tell you how to treat people because they want to treat them with the old mind? But God tells you how to treat them with the new mind? Even Jesus said, he said, it was once told you eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Jesus was saying, that's the old mind. Okay, but there's a new way of thinking once you get saved. So if you don't push out the old way of thinking, you will be saved still acting like you're unsaved. Lord, have mercy. It says, replace the old with the word of God and with a new way of thinking that reflects Christ. You will continue to make bad choices because your choices can only come from the information that's in your mind. If you don't renew your mind, then you're, I don't care how good you are, your choices can only be bad if bad stuff is in your head. I, I use for an example, and I learned this at an early age of Brother Etienne. You know, you know how we brought up black and this black and white thing in my head? So Brother Etienne, I saw a, a movie was on TV. I was young. I wasn't even in my teens. And I saw this black man driving this Caucasian around. You know what I said? Look at him. Got the black man driving him around while he sitting in the back seat. And within a few hours, another movie came on and a white 
person was driving and a black person was sitting in the back seat. You know what I said? Look at him. He gets to drive the car and the black person got to sit in the back seat. But see, I filtered both of those situations through what was in my head. So it couldn't come out positive because it wasn't nothing positive in my head about it. You ever, you ever notice uh, a person can, can, the phone can ring, you know the phones that used to ring on the wall. The phone can ring and you can say hello and they can hang up on you. And you'd be like, wow, they just hung up the phone. But then if you think somebody's calling for somebody else and you have asked, hello, uh-huh, must have been for you. It just all depends on what's in your head. And you have to understand if negative is in your head, it doesn't matter what's going on, that's what you're going to see. And if we don't renew our mind, then our mind will never let us get past where we are. Are y'all with me? Now, I'm not talking about choosing the thoughts that come to your mind, because you can't change the thoughts that come to your mind. The problem is when the thought comes to your mind and it has something to attach to. That's why renewing your mind is so important. Look what I have here. In Philippians 2, 5, and 6, look at what it said. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus knew he was God and man, and he knew it was nothing wrong with him saying he's God. He thought it wasn't robbery for him to say I'm equal with God. But he, look what it says, he made himself of no reputation. He chose humility. What mind did he have? He was, uh, he was an, um, he had to humble himself, but he chose humility. But where was the humility at? It was already a part of him because he knew what he came to do and he knew what, what type of person he had to be in order to accomplish it. It was already in his mind that I've got to be humble when I get down there. And he chose humility. He wouldn't have been able to choose humility if humility wasn't in his mind. You know, we got proud people. We want them to be humble. They, don't, they can't choose humility. It's not in their mind. That's why God has to humble some people because they don't have the ability to humble themselves because it's not a part of who they are. That's why if you don't get rid of hurt, pain, disappointments, frustrations, phobias, anger, unforgiveness, envy, strife, if you don't get all of this out of your mind, then you don't leave yourself with any positive information to choose from. That's why people are bad in relationships. It's not because the, wife, the, the man is bad or the woman is bad. It's your head is bad. Because you'll get hurt by one person, and so in your head, all you can think about is that hurt. So, and, and how this person treated you, so everybody else is subject to what's in your head. Look, your life will only improve when your decisions, your thought process, and choices have a better list to choose from. Your life will not improve until you have a better list to choose from. I need two people to come up here. I need Brother Price, Sister Lori. Amen. Quickly. Yeah. Amen. Pastor Cardi, you're dropping stuff. All right. Right here, this is the renewed minds. I get that to my daughter. And right here, an unrenewed mind. And these little baskets represents the mind. Okay? What's in these baskets is what's in your mind. I don't care what you're going through. This is all you have to choose from because that's all in your head. Pick out one. You don't have to pick out the one on the top. Just pick out any one of them. This is what it says. I would never be happy. Give me one, Lauren. Look what it says. She had to pick that one. I love my pastor. <laughs> Amen. 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 Pick, give me another one out of there. Just give me one. This is only what's in your head. I can't trust nobody. Pick one. What's in your head, Lauren? What's in your head? 
God, I thank you for my peace. Come on, give me one more out of there. All right, what does this say? I will never own, I'll never have a home. Give me one out of there. It says, I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Why is she only picking good stuff out of here? That's all that's in there. Why is he only picking bad stuff out of here? That's all that's in there. Now, what we try to do is put them all together. Now, we don't know what we're going to get now. Because we didn't purge, we merge. We didn't renew, we combine. You can't combine the old man with the new man. Now you're a mixed bag of nuts. You may be seated. You may be seated. Now we don't know. One day Riggins might be on it like a duck on a June bug. But the next week Riggins, we think, man, what, what's wrong with Elder Riggins? He, he reached inside of his mind which, where he's merged all of these different thoughts. And now we don't know what he's going to come up with. Lord, have mercy. Your actions and your reactions in life come from within, within your mind. You don't, you don't respond based on outward stuff. You, you, you respond based on what's in your head. Look at what it says. God saw Genesis 6 and 5. Good to see you, Sister Rosner. Genesis 6 and 5, look what it says. And God saw the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and this wickedness came from their imaginations and their thoughts. What was in their head is what they did. It caused the whole world to be destroyed, save Noah and his family. So you have to be very careful. Or what's, if you don't renew your mind, then your life and your, it, it, it's subject to what's in your head. Human thoughts, feelings, listen, human thoughts, feelings, choices, and behavior are rooted in the brain. That's, your brain is made up of a complex network of cells that receive information. Your mind receives information from internal, you know, I've been hurt, I've been I've been disappointed, and it receives information external. And all this information goes into your mind. Once it gets into your mind, you form your opinion of others, you form your opinion of yourself, and you uh, perform, you, you, you uh, get your decision based on the world and people around you. Based on everything you've gone through, if you don't filter it, if you don't watch it, you're going to come up with a decision, uh, an opinion of stuff based on what's in your head. Look at the COVID shot. People got, they have, a, they have a, they have their opinion, their mind is made up about the COVID shot, and they don't have no information. They don't have no back, no, no facts to back it up. It's just how they feel. Well, where do these feelings come from? Out of their head. You ask somebody, are you a Republican or a Democrat? Some people don't even know why they're Republican or Democrat. And then those that don't know, is it valid? Is it a valid reason? Or is that just what you think? Look at Ford, Chevy, and Toyota. You talk, man, I wouldn't buy no old raggedy Ford. Where did you get that from? Did your dad tell you 30 years ago or 40 years ago that Ford wasn't no good, buy a Chevy? And you have never, you have never owned a Ford since your daddy told you that? Ford could be the number one seller and the best built car. But in your head, my daddy told me Ford's a raggedy. And you don't, have, you don't have no information. You're just going by what's in your head. A renewed mind, listen, this is very important. I'm closing on this. A renewed mind can give you a renewed life. Just think, if your life has always been the same, maybe your mind won't let it change. A renewed mind can give you a renewed life. It can give you a new lease on life. It can give you a joy and a peace you've never experienced if you just change the way you think. It can give you a new outlook, a new attitude that will cause you to excel. Some people are held back. You ever notice some folks say, well, my mama, I ain't have no mama, I ain't have no daddy, or, the, or, the, or the, the man don't want me to make it, you know, we oppress. Well, I could see that if none of us were excelling. <laughs> you know, I could, but we didn't have a black president, so don't nobody have no excuse now. 
we didn't have one of us to make it all the way to the top, so I don't even want to hear it. No, it's just how you think. I had a friend, uh, uh, I won't call his name, but he always talked about how the man got his foot on his neck and the man won't let him make it. No, see, in your mind, it's a foot on your neck. But in my mind, ain't no foot on my neck. I got a foot on the neck, but ain't no foot on my neck. In my mind, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. In my mind, I'm the head and not the tail. In my mind, I'm above and not beneath. In my mind, I'm more than a conqueror. That's what's in my mind. And that's why I'm still standing. Remember, you can't exceed your mind. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, which is talking about his mind, so is he. If you are a certain way, unhappy, not content, no peace, stop blaming others. Check what's in your mind. Because I don't care what people do for you. I don't care how blessed you are. Your mind can tell you you're not blessed. You can have more than everybody around you. Your mind can tell you you're lonely. You sit in a house full of people. Your mind can tell you that they're not hiring. And it's it's more jobs out there a little bit. Your mind can tell you that there's no men out there to marry, and you'll always be single. Your mind can tell you all men are dogs, and that's what you'll think. You'll get one that ain't a dog, but you'll think he is. Your mind can tell you all preachers want money, and you don't even know the church is getting ready to go into foreclosure, and, and, and they ain't already hauled off both of the vans, and the pastor just saying, look, y'all, we need to give. And mm-hmm, there they go again. <laughs> and you don't know if y'all don't give today. This, this Sunday, you won't be here next Sunday, but, but because of your mind. And then if you do tell them, well, what did the pastor do with all the money? Mindset. Our mind can hold us captive or our minds can set us free. Our minds can cause us to be victorious. What did, was it Caleb and Joshua at 80 years old? They said, hold up. 40 years ago, we was promised this mountain. Yeah, I know we 80 years old, but we still in our mind. We still want our mountain. How do you think? You got you to think like that. What did David have to do when they uh, uh, thought about uh, uh, stoning him? He had to go get his mind right. He said, I went and encouraged myself. I went and got my mind right, and I got up, and I went forth and conquered. He couldn't do that if, it was, if he wasn't already a conqueror, and it was already in his mind. He didn't go grab something without, he grabbed something within. He knew he was a warrior. He he knew he was a victorious king. So all he did was reach in his mind and encouraged himself and got up and went out and conquered. So how do you feel about yourself? Are you always the victim? Are you always feeling as though I'll never be happy, I'll never have this? Guess what? You won't. But if you're a go-getter, you ever seen a go-getter? What does go-getters do? They go get it. <laughs> they, they go make it. They, I think they call them shakers and movers. I, I mean, they go make it. They got some people that can make stuff happen. They just, I handle it out. You know what? Because that's the way they think. Y'all see the commercial on TV where this lady have all these images of herself, and she say, like, worry me, what do you think? Uh, pessimistic me, what do you think? You know, all of this. But what's in, what kind of person are you in your head? Have you renewed your mind? Have you merged the old man with the new? Or have you renewed it according to the word of God? I want to always be what God has called me to be. I always want to exemplify that. I always want to be, want to be strong and want to be victorious and want to be an overcomer. You know why? Because that's what God says I am. So I put that in my head. As a child, I was a defeated little foe. I just got my little, my little feelings hurt. I got picked on and bullied and all of that. And I was a little timid little rascal. But when I got saved, my mind is renewed. Now I'm bad in the spiritual realm, and I think I'm bad in the flesh. I may not be. I just think that way. But in the spiritual realm, I know I am. <laughs> but what I'm saying is your mind is what's going to take you from where you are to where you want to be. If you want to excel Renew your mind and be that person that God wants you to be. You want to be up and down, then merge the old man with the new man. 
You won't always live defeated. Don't do nothing at all. And watch how your mind keeps you where you are right now. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Uh, I don't know if I should do this to the people that's watching, but we have in the back, somebody say, Pastor's doing a commercial. No. We have in the back, for your consideration, this is, I'm sure they'll cut this off, ground turkey. Y'all, you can make turkey spaghettis, turkey patties. We've got cases and cases and cases of it. Please, after service, please go get a case. A case or two. And give them to somebody and free some for yourself. Joe Biden has been so good. We can't even give away food. But we, somebody bought all these cases of ground turkey. Please, saints, go back after service and help yourself for your neighbors and everybody and go and make some turkey spaghetti. What else you make with turkey? Turkey burgers, turkey, turkey chili. Amen. You know what? We might save a few cases and have a, 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 a turkey, turkey competition. I know we got enough turkeys around here, but that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about with the ground meat. I might, we might hold on to a few and see how many different turkey dishes we can come up with. That sounds like a pretty good idea, but please, those of you all that are here, please, after service, please go and get some turkey from the back. God bless you. God keep you. You're now in the hands of Elder Jerry Riggins. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, once again for that inspirational and challenging message. One thing about the Word of God, not only is it for information, and not only is it for inspiration, but also the Word of God is for transformation. Amen. Transformation. We have so many ideologies out there on today. All throughout social media, you can hear some of any and everything. People are expounding and expounding on just about any and everything. Oh, but one thing you cannot go wrong on, and that is the Word of God. The Word of God, amen, has stood the test of time. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus said, my Word He'll stand forever. You can depend on the word of the Lord. And Jesus came all the way from heaven down to save. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to offer Jesus Christ to you on tonight. The pastor talking about renewing our mind. Amen. Letting the word of God renew our mind. Well, the very... Amen. First step in renewing your mind is to give your life to Jesus Christ and to accept him as your Lord and Savior. You have to realize that you're a sinner and you have to realize that you need Jesus. And if you are that person tonight, why don't you just repeat after me the sinner's prayer? Lord, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And I believe that Jesus Christ died on a cross. I confess him now as my Lord and Savior. And I ask you, Jesus, to save me. I receive Jesus Christ into my heart. I believe he died on a cross and rose again. And right now is sitting, sitting at the right hand of God. And I receive you now into my life. I want you to know if you prayed that prayer, amen, in, in, in sincerity, and if you believe that prayer, I want you to know that you are saved on tonight. Don't put it off. We never know what tomorrow may hold. Amen. We want to take this opportunity to give just a couple of observations. 
we have our pastor's birthday celebration coming up his 60th birthday celebration that's going to be taking place his birthday is saturday october the 9th but we're going to celebrate his 60th uh, birthday uh here uh, at the church on uh sunday october the 10th give each and every one of you an opportunity to show some appreciation and love to our pastor amen the bible said give honor to whom honor is due amen and it also talked about those that labor in the gospel those that amen rule and rule well amen and rule well are worthy of double honor so we want to be a blessing to our pastor on that particular day this is all free will and all voluntary nothing is going to be assessed to any auxiliary or to any member so whatever god lays on your heart to be a blessing to our pastor we ask that you would do so and if you choose not to participate we will respect amen your wishes as well and then also a oh by the way the colors on that day are black and gold the colors on that day they are black and gold those are our colors on that particular day and then also on the fourth sunday in october we're celebrating our church anniversary now in this particular celebration each member is asked for 250 dollars 250 dollars will go toward our church anniversary and all the proceeds will be used for the upkeep and the renovation of our church amen we're getting ready to go would you please stand thank you all so much for tuning in via social media please join us back here on sunday morning amen for another exciting time in the word of the lord gracious father god as we come before you tonight god we thank you for the word thank you lord and god we thank you for the opportunity to renew our mind in the name of jesus god hallelujah continue to let your word find us continue oh god to let your word minister to the hearts and minds of your people oh god in the name of jesus god i ask that you would just continue to search our hearts and search our minds oh god if you find anything oh god hallelujah that should not be take it out shine the light of the word on our hearts in the name of jesus search our attitudes oh god search our motives oh god in the name of jesus yes lord we want to be right in your sight now god as we leave this place i pray your blessings upon these your people Abide all hurt, harm, and danger. Bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>